This is Dr. Lee Rogers from the Center for Lower Extremity Ambulatory Research in Chicago, Illinois. In this lecture I will be discussing how do people with diabetes get amputations. Lower extremity amputations in persons with diabetes is a formidable problem. Uh, in this slide you're seeing is a, is a slide captured from the first video of a surgery. And this is Ernst von Bergmann in 1901 in Berlin performing a lower extremity amputation and it has been said in fact on the cover of the Lancet in November of 2005 that somewhere in the world every 30 seconds a limb is lost as a consequence of diabetes. Famous English playwright Charles Bernard Shaw in uh, The Doctor's Dilemma wrote that he marvels that society would pay a surgeon a large sum of money to remove a person's leg but nothing to save it. So how do you go from the diagnosis of diabetes to amputation? And I can assure you that it's not a a single step or a foregone conclusion that once you have the diagnosis of diabetes you'll end in amputation. There are several steps in between these two uh, in between these two events that uh, that may be targets for intervention. We call this the stairway to amputation or steps to amputation. The first step is obviously having the diagnosis of diabetes. Approximately 8 to 12 years after the diagnosis of diabetes patients may develop peripheral sensory neuropathy leading to a decreased or absent sensation in their feet which predisposes them to injury and they can get a foot ulceration. A foot ulceration is a break in the skin which obviously the the dermal envelope is there to protect you and keep your internal environment internal and your and the external environment external. It keeps the bacteria on the outside which which normally reside on the skin. Patients may or may not have vascular disease. Now vascular disease in and of itself is is often not a a direct risk factor for amputation but more so determines the level of amputation whether you're going to amputate below the knee or or perform a foot sparing amputation or maybe a, a, a only a digital amputation. And then the final step which uh, leads to amputation is is often the most emergent and that's infection. So once you have an ulceration and you have a, a break in this protective dermal envelope allows the bacteria to to flourish on the inside and, and causes a diabetic foot infection which leads to a diabetic foot amputation. So why is this so important? Why do we care about diabetic foot amputations? Well you can see here in this slide that uh, looking at the relative five-year mortality rate amputation is second only to lung cancer in the in mortality rate. 68% of patients undergoing a diabetic foot amputation will be dead in five years. Also illustrated here is PAD, peripheral arterial disease, 32% five-year mortality rate. We now know that peripheral arterial disease is, is considered a coronary equivalent. Patients who are diagnosed with PAD need to be given intensive therapy to prevent future cardiovascular and cerebrovascular events. So let's now discuss about preventing amputation and, and what are the targets for intervention here in preventing amputation. Well we know that if you can prevent neuropathy, there are currently no treatments on the uh, FDA approved treatments to reverse diabetic neuropathy and bring back sensation, but if you can prevent neuropathy through tight glucose control and or maybe even delay its onset, you can prevent the subsequent ulceration and infection and in most cases you can prevent the amputation. Likewise if you can prevent a diabetic foot ulceration through uh, custom footwear or good patient education giving the patient a, a dermal thermometer to monitor their foot temperatures to warn them to inflammation occurring or perhaps some some uh, soft tissue expanding substances like PLLA injections or silicone injections. If you can prevent this ulceration from occurring, 
and you can prevent the infection and you can prevent an amputation. We're skipping over vascular disease because as I stated before vascular disease most often just determines the level of amputation and not directly uh, alone as a risk factor in regard to diabetic foot amputations. Now infection, if you can prevent infection by good wound healing principles, uh, frequently debriding, uh, using specialized advanced wound dressings, perhaps something with silver in it, uh, you, can, you can prevent this emergent situation which may require an amputation. This was a primer on how diabetes leads to amputations and armed with this knowledge as my mentor David